Okay, good evening guys. Um, we will be talking about motors and gears for this discussion. And we all know what motors and gears are. If you have a motorcycle, then you know what these things are. Okay, so let's talk about first the history of electric motors. Brief history of electric motors. Over the years, the electric motor has evolved extensively and continues to play a key and growing role in today's society. When, when was the electric motor invented? So, um, they said in the year 1740, so around 1740s, inventions began. Um, previous dates before the 1740, um, still manual, like they still use horses and and other means of transportation during that time because without the aid of electric motors, they cannot just um, arrive at their destination the fast way possible. Okay. Early incarnations of the electric motor first appeared in the 740s through the work of Scottish Benedictine monk and scientist Andrew Gordon. Other scientists such as Michael Faraday and Joseph Henry continued to develop el early electric motors experimenting with electromagnetic fields and discovering how to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. So we all know that using um, um, these electromagnetic fields, they come up with the idea of how to to actually get an electric energy and mechanical energy out from it. So when we have electric energy, then we can convert it into kinetic energy as well with the help also of mechanical energy. Well, in 1834, the first electric motor is made. So just imagine that time. In the year 1834, they already have an electric motor by that time. So you just also imagine the the dates before that and the way uh, they're living. Uh, just imagine, compare it to today, okay? History was made when Thomas Davenport of Vermont invented the first official battery-powered electric motor in 1834. So take note for 1834, Battery-powered electric motor was invented. So it was Davenport of Vermont. This was the first electric motor that had enough power to perform a task and his invention was used to power a small-scale printing press. So imagine, oh, if I was alive during that time, 1834, I am for sure that I'll just, I'll just be roaming around the area. But with the brilliant minds such as um, Thomas Davenport, so they've come up with this project. So in 1886, the invention of the DC motor. So we all know as we go on, we will discuss the DC and AC motors. What's the difference between these two? Okay. So again, in 1886, the invention of DC motor. So in William Sturgeon invented the first DC motor that could provide enough power to drive machinery, but it wasn't until 1886 that the first practical DC motor that could run at constant speed under variable weight was produced. So Frank Julian Sprague was its inventor, and it was the motor that provided the catalyst for the wider adoption of electric motors in industrial application. So we have now if, um, an evolution of these motors Okay, this, we all know that DC motors are direct current. So DC motors are um, powered by direct current. Unlike electric um, AC motors, they can be powered by alternating current such as um, that we use in our homes. So most, most common DC motors are powered by um, 3 volts, um, 6 volts, 9 volts, 12 volts, 24 volts, 48 so there, these are the varying power sources for DC motors. So late 1880s, motors are used for commercial use. So imagine in 1880, they already have motors. So it took like um, thousands of years before electric motors were invented. 
Despite Davenport's dis great discovery, many years previously, electric motors were not widely used on a commercial level for another 50 years. Scientists and engineers continue to develop various types of electric motors with the objective of making them suitable for use in commercial setting. Before long, electric motors began being used throughout the industry, in factories and in home. So uh, guys, in 1888, the AC induction motor is patented. So AC induction mo motor is patented. In 1887, Nikola Tesla, from the history of elect um, electricity that we have tackled, Ele Nikola Tesla invented an AC induction motor that he successfully patented a year later. It wasn't suitable for road vehicles, but it was later adapted by Westinghouse engineers. In 1892, the first practical induction motor was designed, followed by a rotating bar winding rotor, making the unit suitable for use in automotive applications. So in the year 1891, the development of three-phase motors. So for example, um, we have... Uh, let's just say wipe wipe I think wiper motors has two two phase so it can be uh, I think three it can be power it can be triggered in three volts nine volts and 12 volts so from low medium and high speed so basically that's um the use why there are phases for motors in this year general electric started developing three phase induction motors in order to utilize the bar winding rotor design, GE and Westinghouse signed a cross licensing agreement in 1896. 2000s use of motors today in the 21st century, AC and DC electric motors are now widely used in industries across the globe and are integral part of many applications. So, like for example, uh, if you buy lechon manok in lechon area, so they they are using wiper motors as an automatic rotating mechanism for their lechon manok. So that's um, one way to avoid um, damaging the quality of the produced lechon manok. So that's one example of uh, a motor. Now, let's proceed with the parts of an electric motor. So basically, if we even we, if you search the internet, um, there these are the parts of a motor. So we have here the shaft. If you can actually, wait, I'll find some of my motors. So like, for example, I have here a motor. So this is an old one. This is a DC motor. I I don't if you can see this one. So tagkalaing na siya. And then uh, we can actually relate this one. Uh, we can actually relate this one to what we are seeing in the picture. So um, it has a shaft here. It has the bearings. Bear, you're familiar with bearings, right? the end bracket and of course the frame to cover up all this um, assembly we have the stator it's inside the motor so we also have stator community commutator brush assembly and armature so um as you can see this this is just a small motor but actually inside it are coordinating parts to make it function as what is it it is intended to do so again you just have to familiarize this one shaft bearings end bracket frame stator community commutator brush assembly and armature um maybe in our exams we can include this and i'll just have to let you identify the parts just be familiarized with the parts of this um, motor okay Next, electric motor. An electric motor is used to convert electrical energy into mechanical energy. Let's go through an instance. What does the mixer in your house do for you? 
the rotating blades mash and mix things for you. So you're familiar with what mixer is, right? So um, the primary mechanism for a mixer is the rotating blades mash and mix things for you. And if someone were to ask you how, how that works, what would you say? So if you will be asked, you would probably say that it works on electricity. Well, that's not incorrect. Motors convert electric energy into mechanical work. So that's why from our AC sources, it's electrical. If we trigger it using electrical energy, then um, the output is a mechanical work. So that means that the rotation is mechanical. That, um, that indicates that um, the mixer is working. The opposite is done by generators that convert mechanical work to electrical energy. Okay. So different parts of electric motor and their function. A simple motor has the following parts. A power supply, mostly DC for a simple motor. We have also the field magnet could be permanent magnet or an electromagnet since uh, we are actually uh, using most uh, mostly nowadays the electromagnetism concept. An armature or rotor as what we have seen earlier, the commutator, the brushes, and the axle. Part so another way of showing you the parts, the different parts of an electric motor and their function, as you can see here. Um, coil rotates. North. Oh wait, wait one. We have here brushes carry current to a commutator. Um, this is the source. This is the battery, okay? So most probably this is a DC motor. So we have positive and negative sides here. So electric current flows here. And brushes carry current to commutator. And then actually north and south, as you, we, have, uh, we have learned from our high school days and and um, even in our college days, we have north and south pole of a mag magnet, magnetic field. So, commutator reverses current here. And the one here is the one that circulates the current here on our magnetic field. So, when there's um, connection with this, then the motors will rotate clockwise. But it's not only clockwise. In fact, it can also move counterclockwise. You just have to interchange the connection for the positive and the negative side of your battery source or your power supply. Okay. Now, a power source, a simple motor usually has a DC power source. It supplies power to the motor, armature, or field coils. We have there the commutator. It is the rotating interface of the armature coil with a stationary circuit. The field magnet, the magnetic field helps to produce a torque on the rotating armature coil by virtue of Fleming's left hand rule. We have also the armature core holds the armature coil in place and provides mechanical support. The armature coil, it helps the motor to run. Um, brushes, it is a device that conducts current between stationary wires and moving parts, most commonly the rotating shaft, okay? What is the working principle of an electric motor? Okay, the principle. The working of an electric motor is based on the fact that a current carrying conductor produces a magnetic field around it. So, it's because of the current um, being supplied into our electric motors, it it is the method that's why it's actually rotating. So without power supply, it will not rotate because we cannot complete the electromagnetism effect. So to better understand, imagine the following situation. Okay, take two bar of magnets, two bar magnets, and keep the poles facing each other with a small space in between, actually, you can 
if you have already used magnets, we call it sabisaya term, it's magnet. And then if you face it at a certain um face of the magnet, there there is a corresponding effect. Like if one is like this and one is um facing and the one is back um north and south, so the tendency is that it will um actually attract to each other, but we when they have the same pull, it will repel. So let's just um um, continue. Now, take a small length of a conducting wire and make a loop. Keep this loop in between the space between magnets. So, if actually, if you take um two magnets on both sides and use a small length of conducting wire and make a loop, that's why in our motors, we can see actually winding, winding of um, um, conducting wires, keep this loop in between the space between the magnets such that it is still within the sphere of influence of the magnets. Now, for the last bit, connect the ends of the loop to battery terminals. So it's actually the same concept of if you have your, your, your dynamo motors, if you have seen, if you have tried um, crash gear uh, previously when you were still young, I've already tried. Let's go um, small RC cars. So basically, inside it are motors. That's why it still run. Okay. Do you have questions so far? Do you have questions, guys? Was passer was okay. Let's proceed. Now, so this is more like an illustration. So. Um, the positive current flows here and it will actually rotate there. And that is why when a current when a current flows here, it influences the the poles of the magnet. That's why even though they're not actually tapped to each other, because that's the that's the mechanism. Uh the, the inside motors will rotate. That is the concept of our electric motors. That's why um, we have those versions that are high speed, high torque. So high speed means that it's actually fast moving. When we talk about high torque, it can actually carry out heavy loads. So, But there are motors in in high torque quality and in high speed which means that though it's carrying a high load like for example um rotating a bigger load it still has a fast speed so that mo those motors are really expensive because it you can actually have two options for that one again the high torque and the high speed so but in nowadays we have separate high speed and high torque. Depend it depends on your requirement. What is the working principle of an electric motor? So once electricity flows through your simple circuit, you will notice that your loop moves. So as you can see here, your loop moves. This is the loop, as you can see here, the arrow. So this is how the direction of our current right now. So why does this happen? The magnetic field of the magnets interferes with the produce due to electric current flowing in the conductor. Since the loop has become a magnet, one side of it, it will be attracted to the north pole of the magnet and to the other south pole. So this causes a loop to continuously rota rotate. This is the principle of working electric motors. That's why I've told you earlier, if you have magnets facing like north and the south pole, so when a current moves around here, and then we have your magnets at every side, um, the, the magnetic field interferes with the current flowing here. That's why it will rotate and rotate and rotate as long as there is a power source. So that's the concept here. Now, we also have types of electric motor. The primary classification of electric motor is as follows. So 
take note guys ha. Um, types of motors, we have DC motors and AC motors. Again, uh, DC means direct current motors, okay? Direct from the from the term direct current, so it's DC. While on the other hand, we have AC motors. AC motor is alternating current motors. For DC motors, the supply are um, like 12 volts, 24 volts, as what I've said earlier, 9 volts. We also have 5 volts, 3, even 3.3 volts. So these are the powers, the common power supply that you you give or you produce for the DC motors. While on the other hand, we have AC motors. AC motors actually run for 220 volts that we have in our house. And there are those that diesel powered, um, gasoline powered motors. Okay. So the difference, again, DC motors is direct current. So most probably uh, the power so power power source are batteries and AC motors are those we we have in our homes the electric current or the 120 the 220 volts for us but in other countries they only have 110 volts okay for DC mo under DC motors we have brushless and brushed okay brushless usually brushless are high speed motors brushed um brushed are actually geared inside it so for brushless brushless motors are commonly used like for for rc cars um rc boats i've tried um developing one so i've used brushless motors uh, the one it's more like an imitation of a pump boat so you use brushless dc motors because it's high speed now, on the other hand, we have here the, under AC motors, the synchronous. So, it's single here. And the induction. As you can see here, brushless has no other more classification and as well as for synchronous in AC motors. Under brushed mo um, DC motors, we have series wound, shot wound, compound wound, and permanent magnet. So, these are the... Um, classification under the brush dc motors while on the other hand for the induction um ac motors we have single phase so um it has only one phase that you can uh create and while there is also a three phase so um let's just, let's just compare it to how we turn the gear in our motorcycle so primera segunda and tercera so that's that's more like um, the concept of AC motors induction with the three phase. Uses of an electric motor. Electric motors are used in variety of applications. Some of them are listed below. So that's why, diba, you can see that even in construction supplies, um, they use, uh, they usually use, uh, no, not usually, they always use motors. Like even for, um breaking the the concrete so they use motors there that's why we have drills here um drills we can punch into the concrete of our house because of drills it has motors inside it we have water pumps motor that's why during construction water pumps can also be found even if at our house hard disk drives hdd Washing machines, of course, washing machines are powered with them aside from electricity. So it has a mechanism of the motor. That's why you can identify the rotation. We have also industrial equipment. So a lot of factories now nowadays uses, of course, motors. Because assembly line, if we don't have motors in assembly line, then that's more like um, putting yourself... Uh, at trees at uh, the same time your production rate will not uh, will decrease so that's why they use motors for that one you can expect the efficiency of a functioning motor to be around 70 to 85 percent as the remaining energy wasted in heat production and sounds emitted that's why we cannot actually guarantee 100 percent performance from the these from this from these motors like for example 
uh, I've bought these motors that I have currently now have in my projects. So they say they will state on the specification like the rotation is 15,000 revolution per minute. So that's a brushless motor. So that's 15,000 revolution per minute with a supply of 12 volts. But if we supply it with 24 volts, so what's the speed now? So it's actually 30,000 revolution per minute. Okay, okay. Uh, the 12 one has 15,000. When you increase it to 24 volts, so we have doubled the, the voltage supply. So 30,000 is the revolution per minute. However, we cannot expect that it will actually um, reach the 30,000 revolution per minute because we have this 70 to 85% um, efficiency. Because we all have, we know that um, when, when motor actually turns on we can feel the heat even we even we though we touch it there's a heat produced and of course there's a sound produced so the remaining energy is actually wasted but since we have 80 for 85 percent efficiency that's good that's still good okay types of electric motors so as you can see here guys there are different motors if you have seen this already um, I know that most of you are familiar, especially in, in vulcanizing, we, we see these motors. Um, actually, this type of motors are already indust for industrial. So we can see this from water district. We can see this from factory lines, these motors. And for DC motors... Again, uh, by the way, for AC motors, we are, if you're from if you are curious about their look, so the this is the induction motor, the synchronous motor, the commutator motor, the the wound rotor motor, the squirrels cage motor. We have also the DC motor. So I've used a lot of DC motors already. So we also have geared DC motors, brush. DC motors, brushless DC motors, as what I've um, experienced. So we have shunt motor here, the series motor, PMDC motor. Um, I've I think I've tried already PMDC motor, the compound motor, separately excited motors. Aside from the AC motors, actually they are classifying also special motors. Stepper motor, I've used already stepper motors for my project. Brushless motor, I've already used this one. Um, servo motor, I've already used this one, but I'm not familiar yet with universal motor and reluctantly motor. So, but other motors like servo motors, I've, as we have here, I've already used this thing. So, again, it's supplied according to the specification that you can see on their um, data sheets, for example. Now, different types of electric motors. As we know, an electric motor plays a vital role in every sector of the industry and also in a wide range of applications. There are a variety of types of electric motors are available in the market. The selection of these motors can be done based on the operation and voltage and applications. So again, it, it's based on the operation, the your requirement, um, the intensity of the work, the voltage, and what is actually the application of these motors. Every motor has two essential parts, namely the field winding and the armature winding. The main function of field winding is to produce a fixed magnetic field, whereas the armature winding looks like a conductor which is arranged within the magnetic field. Because of the magnetic field, the armature winding uses energy to generate an adequate torque to make the motor shaft turn currently the classification of dc motor can be done based on the winding connections which means how the how two coils in the motor are connected with each other now types of i've seen i've already let you see the types of electric motors right so there are also versions of those things that's why uh, in general Let's have a review for uh, here. The types of electric motors are available in three 
main segment. So previously, I've shown you the DC motors and AC motors, but they are also classifying a special purpose motors. That's why um, in this um, diagram, you can see from electric motors, we have DC motors, AC motors, and other motors. So this is another point of reference in terms of the types of electric motors. This is shot I've shown you earlier. This one and AC motors and other motors. So DC motors, I like this one. If you can see this image here, I have a lot of these in my house because I can use this to make a, a do-it-yourself vacuum cleaner, do-it-yourself um, pump. Matawag, excuse me, sir. Matawag uh, ba, sir, ni siya ng dynamo? Amo ba yun? Um, we actually, we usually call it dynamo. But um, yes, it's valid to call this one a dynamo. Um, but to be safe, actually, the right term is um, DC motor. So we commonly found this in our toys. So right in, um, in our, the, the one that we receive give, as a gift during Christmas. So we can actually find this one. And it's powered by uh, usually four triple um double A battery. So one one double A battery is equal to 1.5 volts. Since it's four for 1.5 volts battery, so 1.5 times four that's six volts. So usually this type of DC motor is powered by a six volts power supply. Now let's proceed. Um, the, again, we have talked about decision motor. Decision motor works on the DC and the windings of this electric motor, like the armature windings and field windings are linked in parallel, which is known as shunt. So that's why it's called shunt because it's it's of its parallel connection. We also have separately excited motor. The connection of stator and rotor can be done using differently different power supply. Okay, that's why it's separately excited because um two attached motors has two different power supply. DC series motor in DC series motor rotor windings are connected in series. The operation principle of this electric motor mainly depends on a simple electromagnetic law. We have also PMDC motor. So PMDC stands for permanent magnet DC motor. It is one of it is one kind of DC motor which can be inbuilt with permanent magnet to make the magnetic field necessary for the electric motor operation. We also have DC compound motor. Is it is a hybrid component of DC motors, a uh, DC series and shunt motors. For the AC motors, the types of AC motors mainly include asynchronous, as, um, asynchronous and then induction motor. So this is one of the examples. I've, I'm not sure if I've seen this personally, but if I can remember if I've already traveled in different factories and in different um, companies which involves um, automation, most probably, I've seen this one already. But if you can see this one, you can already identify um, this is an AC motor. Excuse me, sir. Um, so personal yon dako yon siya. Yes, ini ini dako ini. Usually, AC motors are are huge motors. Uh, um, okay, if you okay. oh, if you are familiar with um, sa vulcanizing the the one that pumps out air, so it's still a motor. That's why. If there's no electricity, they cannot use that one to operate. They use manual pumping for Pati the yung pang shape ga ni sir ng kuan metal. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Um how do you call that one? Um if you if you want to to create your own winding uh, your gear, gear for your um projects, you can also the one that you've mentioned for metals. So, the working of the synchronous motor mainly depends on the three-phase supply. 
the stator in the electric motor generates the field current which rotates in a stable speed based on the AC frequency. So from the word synchronous, so whatever the provided um, current there, so the motor synchronizes with it and that's the and that's actually the demand. That's why there is also the three-phase supply. The induction motor, the electric motor which run a synchronous speed is known as in asynchronous is induction motor. And an alternate name of the motor is asynchronous motor. Now, for this special purpose, that's why I've also mentioned this one. Since they have identified DC and AC, there is also these special purpose motors. Mainly include servo motor, stepper motor, linear induction motor. So mo um, on my part, uh, so I've said earlier, I've used already these things. So the stepper motor can be used to offer step angle revolution as an alternative to stable um, revolution. Now for, for actually for the stepper motor, um, from what I have um, learned, so I have here, if you want to see, so like for example, this one, this, uh, okay, this is a stepper motor. Okay, okay, this is a stepper motor, okay. So this is how it looks like hmm. here. And it actually, it has different colors of wires. So it has five color wires. Because you can actually modify the speed and the angles. So that's why it's called stepper motors. Because um, from, from a different angle, it moves like a clock. So you can actually direct whatever, wherever um, angle that you want it to be. Now for brushless DC, DC motors, sorry. The brushless DC motors were first developed for achieving superior performance with a lesser space than brush DC motor. So superior performance, that's why um, these are commonly used for fast speed, um, like speed boats. Actually, those are brush, um, brushless DC motors. For hysteresis motor, the operation of the hysteresis motor is extremely unique. The rotor of this motor can be induced by hysteresis and eddy current to generate the required task. Reluctance motor, actually, we're not, uh, even myself, I'm not really in, um, in directly involved with these um, motors, but we need you just need to be familiarized with the concept of other motors because these are actually industry <laughs> related. If you want to work in a company, you are not familiar with the special motors. There's the reluctance motor, basically, reluctance motor is a one phase synchronous motor. And this motor construction is quite same with induction motor like cage type. So there's still a cage type for these motors. We also have universal motor. This is a special kind of motor and this motor works on a single AC supply, other, otherwise DC supply. Universal motors are series one where the field and armature windings are connected in series. Thus generates high starting torque. So um, for universal motor, if you need uh, to carry out a bigger load, so you that's why universal motors are used because of the torque quality that it can carry out now let's talk about the functions of gear so aside from motors actually most mostly uh, motors and gears are in partner that's why um we we at, i've told you earlier example the chon manok house so there is a motor there, a wiper motor. The one that's why it's called wiper because that's when we usually find in our cars in in multi cabs. That's why that's that wipes out the if your windshield are wet and it's raining. It's paired with uh, how do I call that gear? Just like what we find we can find in our motorcycle. The the one we 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 attach the the chain or cadena so most probably um all those military manok house use this one to to efficiently utilize the power of the dc motor 
function of gears. So, if you have seen this one, trans the functions of gears are the following. Uh, the general functions we have to transfer motion. We because we all know that with gears the okay the work of our motors are easier, and we also have um, change direction, increase speed or decrease speed, increase and decrease torque. Torque um, is speed is how fast something is moving, so that's the definition of speed. For the torque, torque is turning or twisting force. That's why I've always told you about the load. The load it can carry out. Example, a longer wrench gives you more torque and makes it easier to loosen a bolt or screw. screw. Um, change planes of rotation. The functions of gears, gears for setting the root. Um, gears actually used for setting the rotates, rotating speed. Um, gears for transmitting power. Gears for changing torque. Again, setting the, the speed to so whatever, like for example, we have here, example is 1,400 revolution per minute. And I've said earlier, my brushless DC motor, with it has gears inside it. That's why it can actually rotate 30,000 revolution per minute. It also gears for transmitting powers, gears for changing torque, gears for changing the power direction. Okay, so... You just have to remember these four major functions of gears, rotate speed, transmit power, change torque, and change power direction. Well, the types of gears. So if you have seen this already, so these are the gears that are commonly used. Okay. As you can see, um, for... For the types of gears, can you can, can you see the image projected on the screen, right? So if you so, object, oh, if you have seen this, that's why in the image it it has always its pair, right? So paris din sila, and then by turning these things, so the the number of teeth for these gears and for these gears are should be. I like na not equal but in proportion. Okay. So gears, actually gears, on my part, gears are one of those most uh one of the difficult things that you need to do in project making. Because you have to consider the teeth, the balance, the speed. So types of gears, spare gears, spare um gears that are often found in various places. So spare gears, if <laughs> external and internal gears. Helical gears, what the helical gears here, um, bevel gears. So these are the types of the major types of gears. But on the picture that I've provided you, we have the spur gears, the bevel gears, and screw gears. We also have helical gears, miter gears, internal gears, rack and pinion, worm and worm gear. Okay. So for for the topic of motors and gears, um, that's we that's all that we have for motors and gears, and we will also talk about 